Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at NetLease, which is a third party NetSuite app produced by a company called NetGain. And I've reviewed a few of their accounting products. NetLease specifically covers the aspect not of our company leasing products out to customers or clients. That's actually a different product called NetLessor. NetLease specifically handles our company leasing assets from another company. So the reason NetLease came about was up until 2022, there was a accounting regulation regarding leasing called ASC 840. And in 2022, that changed to ASC 842. And it was a pretty dramatic change. So from 2023 on, companies have had to really transition over to handling their leases in accordance with the new rule set. And NetLease really fulfilled and bridged that gap between the old rules and the new ASC 842. Now, before we dive into the demo itself, I do want to say, if you're looking for additional training on NetSuite, my website has a series of courses covering everything from new users to administrators, accountants, project personnel, even consultants in training and the Suite Foundation certification exam. All of these different courses are available on the site. You can check out the link below if you're interested. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I'm here in the home dashboard in a particular NetGain demo account, and we can come up here to this NetLease tab. Now, I should point out just from the get-go that NetLease, as well as the other NetGain products, this is native NetSuite. So it's operating within your normal NetSuite instance. You can simply come up here, and I wanna start off with creating a new lease. So you get a concept of what goes into that process. So we're gonna come down to lease management and we'll click on new lease. All right, so it pulls up. Now, before I actually walk into these fields themselves, I do wanna point out that while I'm doing the manual creation step here, there's actually a few other ways to create these leases. One, you can actually see right here, we have this AI upload. This is actually a new tool that NetGain just came out with, with the NetLease product. And it basically will scan through a contract and it will use the AI tool to pick out clauses and information to populate the necessary information to create a new lease. Now, because it's new, I haven't actually had time to kind of tinker with it and see how accurate it is. I'm assuming because it is such a new product and you know AI is still kind of working out the kinks, it might not be perfect every time, but the fact that they include it is a great sign to show that they're trying to include some of those more advanced capabilities in the product. So you do have that available to you and you can check it out and see how accurate it is with your own leases. In addition, a common way for people, especially when they're first transitioning over to NetLease, is to import a lot of leases at once. As long as you have things appropriately set up, you can bring in a whole batch of leases at the same time. And in addition to that, there is a feature called a lease proposal. And if you're not totally sure with how the classification system works with leasing, it will basically walk you through and ask a series of questions that will help you navigate the configuration of a lease to make sure that the information is appropriate and accurate within your system. So you've got a lot of different options there. For the sake of this demo, I'm really just gonna stick to the manual approach because it's easier to explain things as we go. So I'm gonna start at the top and I'm really just gonna move down. First up, we have the lease name. So let's say we're doing a repair truck that we're leasing. And in terms of lease type, this is obviously a vehicle. So that's pretty straightforward. Then lease classification. So as I just said, sometimes it can be a little bit complex. What is the exact classification? And if you're not sure, you can always use the proposed lease action. But just to give a real short version and kind of an oversimplification, operating and financing leases tend to be the most common. Also, I should comment, there is a subleasing option. So if you've leased assets and then you find that you now wanna turn around and lease that out to someone else, you can do that within NetLease. There is the other product I mentioned before, NetLessor, which is if your business, a core part of it, is leasing products out to customers or clients. But if you have just a few instances where you need to turn around and sublease something, you can still do that within NetLease. You don't have to switch over to NetLessor. So in this case, we're gonna pick operating. Down from that, we have secondary book. So NetLease does have the ability to handle multi-book accounting. So that's always a feature you can rely on if it's a requirement. And if you're dealing with European subsidiaries, 
and that's the IFRS accounting code, then understand that NetLease can be in accordance with that, as well as if you're dealing with a lot of government accounting and you need to follow the GASB accounting rules, NetLease does additionally support GASB as well as IFRS. So it has a lot of functionality in that regard. Moving up here, we have the subsidiary, so I'll select that. We've got some additional fields. These are not mandatory. This is just standard NetSuite fields, so I'm gonna skip over that for now. Coming down here, notice we do have a status which is pending, and you're gonna see as we move forward how that changes. So it's important to note at this stage, we're still in the pending status for this lease. We're obviously gonna select a commencement date. So let's just pick the end of this month for when this lease actually commence. And then we have the lease term, which is a major part of the lease. So let's say it's a 24 month lease term. So it automatically fills in the end date here. Now these fields that we have here, these are really to handle any kind of specific details as part of the lease. So that might be an initial lease payment that you have to have. Potentially you have a discount rate applied to the lease. Maybe you have a prepayment that you've put in or Potentially, some leases have incentives where if you improve the lease in some way, you can get some kind of a discount. You have all these different options if it is part of the lease that you're using. If not, you can leave it blank. Down from that, we have the amortization schedule. So up at the top here, if you're not already familiar with the concept, uplift is pretty common with leases where instead of just having one flat rate for an entire lease, Oftentimes, let's say a year will go by and then there will be an uplift or kind of a kick up in price to a new level. And so you can put in that uplift information to handle whatever that change is. You don't have to get to the 13th month and then have to edit a lease to now suddenly say that it's more expensive than it was originally. You could set all of that up from the beginning. But let's say we don't have to deal with that. Here's where we come down and we actually state the result of this lease. So the effective date, we're going to set it again as April 30th. And let's say the payment amounts are $500. And in this case, they're gonna be monthly. Monthly is pretty common. You can set any other time period that is relevant. So if it's quarterly, annually. Additionally, if you've got payments where it's not just one type of payment, but let's say you get charged every month. And then at the end of the year, there's an additional fee on top of that. You can simply add additional lines on here. One would be monthly, and then the next one would be annual, et cetera, whatever the requirements are for that lease. So before we save this record, a few additional tabs I wanna comment on. We can go over to the accounting tab. A lot of different information you can put in here. And notice, most importantly, at the bottom here, we have all the different accounts that are gonna be affected by this lease and the amortization on it. So these all automatically fill in as soon as we select that lease type that has hard-coded into it all of the different routing for these accounts. Over from that, we have documents. So documents, this is where we can actually attach the contract itself and have that in. Once the lease is created, you'll then have a contract tab, which will have the various information, clauses, et cetera, will all be included there. So it's very easy to access for relevant notes. And then over to the right here, we have renewals. So it's pretty common for leases to run a certain period of time. And then when the lease is technically over, you simply renew it for an extended period. Instead of having to have your lease record basically end and create a new lease at a different point, you're able to use this tab to put in that renewal information here and simply run it as a continuance. So with that information there, we're fine with what we've got. So let's come down here and hit save. So we technically have the lease, but this is the step where we can now review it. We can make sure that we've put in the basic information that it is accurate. And once we're fine with that, we can come up here and hit generate schedule. So we get this confirmation bubble and depending on the lease, the complexity of it, as well as what other things you might have running in NetSuite, sometimes this can take a couple minutes to actually fully generate that schedule, but hopefully we can hit refresh and simply pull it up. All right, there we go. So we now have the schedule is generated. It also comes with this cool chart on the right and I can kind of break it down for you. It will show over the various periods. We can take a look at how the payments are gonna break down period by period. We can see what the liability effect will be as well as the ROU for the asset. So kind of a handy visual view of this asset. And if we come down here, this is where we see the actual schedule as is created. So pretty straightforward. We've got the different periods. We can have the lease payments and then what's happening both with the liability as well as the asset and the balance as it's continuing. 
So all that information is generated. And of course, if you put in other things such as renewals or initial payments, prepayments, et cetera, all of that would be included within the schedule. So now we can come back up to the top and notice we're still in a pending status. So if you've seen my other reviews of some of the NetGain products, you'll notice that they oftentimes will break things out into multiple steps to give people the ability to segregate duties. So for example, let's say you have more junior accountants or clerks who are inputting the lease information and setting things up, but you don't want them to actually push things forward to final creation and actually hitting your accounting books without some sort of management oversight. So what you can do is you can have this step, which is the commencement step, you can separate that. So that's with an accounting manager or a controller who has to review all this information put in by one of his juniors or his subordinates, and then make sure it's fine and actually commence the process. So it just gives you that additional flexibility with the segregation of duties. So let's come up here. We're fine with how things are, and I'm in an administrator role, so I can do both from this one role. So I am gonna hit commence. And that simply changes the status to commence. So we're now ready to actually run the journal entries and put this thing on the books. So because we're fine with that, we're gonna come up here and we're gonna hit run journals. And it brings us to this page. This tool you should be familiar with. This is the exact same tool that you run into for handling fixed asset management or really any journal entries. You have filters at the top. And then at the bottom, you're gonna have any journal entries that fit those filters, and you have the ability to select whichever ones are applicable or all if you want, and you simply run the journal entries or generate the transactions. Now, I'm not gonna run this for this particular one, but understand at this phase, this is where we are running it and we're putting it on the books initially for the first time for this particular lease. Now, once you've done that, you're going to run in the situation where every month you're now amortizing this lease and whatever leases you have. So to do that, you're gonna come back up to net lease. You'll come down to process monthly transactions and you have right here monthly lease journals. So we can click on that. We'll hit leave to leave this page. And it brings us to an almost identical tool where again, we have filters on the top and then we have all of these different journal entries on the bottom. Now, one thing I need to point out in regards to this is once we run these journal entries, it's actually not gonna be finalized. It's not gonna be billed at this point. The way that they've set up NetLease is that by running the journal entries monthly to amortize these leases, it's actually gonna take them and it's gonna post them to clearing accounts. Again, adding another level of supervision so you can ensure that what's been placed in your clearing accounts and the way these journal entries have run for the month is completely accurate. So you're not having to double back and correct issues that have cropped up. So you could hit generate transactions that would put everything in those clearing accounts ready to run. At which point you would come down here, process monthly transactions, and then here you have monthly bills. So you click on that. Again, exact same tool, you simply select them, you, may, you verify that it is all correct, all the clearing accounts are matching up, you run them, at that point you've now actually billed these leases. So that runs through the entire creation process as well as your monthly amortization. Now let's take a look at some additional features that come with NetLease. The first thing I wanna show you is if we come down here, we have this monthly reclass journals. And what this is for, this is a little bit more of a niche use case depending on your circumstances. But for example, if you have amortization hitting a long-term liability account and you have maybe some specific leases that you want a portion of that expense to be reclassified over to a short-term liability account, you can do so using this reclassification tool. So it gives you that extra bit of functionality. Additionally, if I come up here to I have a particular lease here, and this is one that's been running now for some time. So it's already been on the books and it's being amortized. And we can take a look at this lease. So we have all the things I've already covered, such as you can edit the lease, you can run the journal entries, you can bill it, et cetera. You also have the ability to transfer the lease or terminate the lease depending on your contract and if that's something you wanna do. But really what I wanna comment on here is this modification. So if I click on that, it gives me the ability to now make these changes and modifications to this lease. So you can come down here and modification type. There's all different types of ways that you could make a modification. And it might be as a result of a change in the contract. There might be a mistake that's been made. 
One of the most common reasons for making a modification is the fact that potentially there was a clerical error or the person that was inputting the lease in the first place simply didn't put in all the correct information. And so now the lease has been running for quite some time with all incorrect information since the beginning. And to handle that, you would wanna do something like a true up, which wouldn't just handle the current month that you're in, but it gives you the ability to really correct things since the beginning. Now, if we look to the side here, you may have noticed as we've been going through this, if you're dealing with NetLease specifically in NetSuite or really any NetGain product, they've added this little sidebar and you can kind of hover over it and it pops out. And it really has everything that you saw in that drop down menu is included just on the side here. It's just really a quality of life improvement where if you're, especially if you're at the end of month and you're running all your fixed asset management, you're doing amortizations, revenue recognition, and your leases, instead of having to constantly go up into these drop down menus, you can simply move your cursor over to the left and all of the navigation is right there. Just kind of a nifty feature they've included there. But more important to people's core functionality with their leases is going to be the reporting features. So if I come up here, we can come down to reports and let's just pull up all the reports. So notice here on the top right here, we have 56 reports that just come out of the box with NetLease. And a lot of these are for very specific uses and you're not necessarily going to need them, but there's a couple that are commonly used. So for example, we have the waterfall report. So let's run that and let's also take a look at the roll forward. All right, so we have the lease balance roll forward. Let's open up that as well. And let's take a look at this. So this is the waterfall report. So it's got a nice user interface. We can hit expand, see all these areas. Right now it's only showing us one period, which is not particularly helpful. So we'll go down to filters and over here, we'll do it from, let's say the 1st of April and we'll take it several months into the future, let's say to the end of September. So if I take that and now I preview it, we get a more typical waterfall report where we can look at all of these different assets and what's gonna be happening month to month forecasted into the future. So that's a great one. And then this roll forward report is pretty straightforward, right? You've got your beginning balance, any additions, terminations, or anything else that's occurring with these leases, and then the ending balance on the right. So this is kind of a staple for this type of tool. However, there are additional reports that come with the NetLease product that are specifically for disclosure purposes. So when you're dealing with leases, there's certain things that you have to generate for legal and accounting purposes. NetLease kind of takes a lot of that busy work away from you by having them generate, pulling from the records you already have to generate those disclosure reports automatically. So what are some of the pros and cons of using NetLease? I've commented on a lot of the pros as I've gone through this video, the main one being just the fact that it operates in native NetSuite. It's not a kind of separate integration that you have to bolt onto the system. It's simply using what's already existing in the NetSuite system. And that is really a huge selling point. In addition to that, I did comment on the fact that it can handle multi-book accounting. So for some organizations that is necessary for their leasing program. And then really just the additional flexibility to handle all kinds of different use cases that you could and most likely will run into in the process of leasing out assets for your organization. So what are some of the cons of using NetLease? Really the only one that I can point at as a, a significant factor, that's not really a limitation due to the fact that we're just dealing with NetSuite in the first place, is the added cost. Obviously, if you're either not pulling your leases into NetSuite in the first place, or maybe you're using the FAM module, then getting NetLease is gonna require an additional cost. So you do need to take a look at that. There are a couple ways to mitigate that cost. One is the implementation process, while it can and often does get done by the NetGain team, it does come with an additional fee for the implementation. However, they do provide a bunch of free resources for you to basically study up and actually do the implementation process yourself with your own team, thus being able to not have to pay an additional implementation fee. That is a way to cut down on costs. Additionally, while there are a few paid versions of NetLease, they do have technically a free version. Its functionality is severely reduced compared to the paid versions, but you could always check out the free version and see if it's the type of product that you would be interested in before actually making the jump to purchase it.
And lastly, I do wanna comment on some of the other options you have for leasing. Now I've commented on what NetSuite already has with the FAM module, but there is another standout competitor called Lease Query. And when you compare NetLease and Lease Query back to back, a lot of the core functionality is pretty similar. Where NetLease really comes forward is in all the additional flexibility and features that it provides. So that's everything from the AI tool that can scan contracts and pull that information in, all the modification features that are available, multi-book, their auto billing feature. All of these things are either not present in Lease Query or while they do have some capability, there's been complaints from clients who have then had to switch over to NetLease due to that fact. So that's something to keep in mind. Really, you just need to take a look at what are your requirements from a leasing tool and what do you need to actually fulfill those requirements? If you have a very, very limited need for it, then you might not even need to bring your leases into NetSuite in the first place. But as you have more use cases and scenarios that you run into, you're gonna start looking more at a product like net lease to fulfill all of those requirements. So I hope you found that video helpful. If so, please subscribe to watch future content like this, and I'll see you in the next video.